Welcome back, Tribe. I've got a video here titled Difficult Matchmaking. Why are so many leftover men and women in China? It is worrying the CCP. Although the pandemic has made weddings so difficult, Chinese parents will be relieved that a big problem has been solved. Because in China, getting married becomes more and more difficult, and there are more and more so called leftover men and women. In recent years, blind dates during the Chinese New Year have become an activity that is hard to avoid for young people. Chinese parents are often more anxious than their children. They worry that their children will be left behind in the dating market, and that the single status of their children often gives them a lot of pressure in social circles. Chinese New Year is the most important festival for Chinese people. Many who work away from home return to their hometowns to celebrate the New Year with their families. It's the main theme of this holiday. People normally have seven days off, while many industries give their workers 15 or more days off for the New Year season. Young people often vent their frustrations on the internet about being forced to go on blind dates arranged by their families. For example, this woman from northern China is only 22 years old. She wrote on her social media Weibo account, that her family arranged for her to attend many blind dates during the Chinese New Year. At one time, she met 20 people in one day. Jeez. It happened on January 10th, and from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., she went on 20 blind dates. Both herself and the other party's parents were present. Each time, the two young people chatted simply, and some of the dates lasted only 10 minutes. The Chinese media, Jimu News, reported that on February 5th, a town government organized a blind date party with long lines of up to 100 men, but only five women. This is all the one-child policy that China's had for decades, blowing up in their face. On top of that, they have another pressure of spoiled Chinese women. There's a bunch of videos on, on TikTok and on YouTube and their version of social media going viral about ultra-wealthy, ultra-spoiled Chinese women. They even have a nickname for them. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they might mention it here. We'll see. On the scene, the town's Civil Affairs Bureau admitted that there is an imbalance of men and women. In a state of natural reproduction, the normal ratio of male to female births is roughly 107 to 100. Since the male mortality rate is higher at all ages, the ratio of males to females in the total population gradually tends to even out. The imbalance between men and women in China has historically been the worst in the world due to the Communist Party's long-standing family planning policy. Mm -hmm. It began on September 25, 1980, when members of the Communist Party took the lead in enforcing the one-child-per-couple rule. In 2015, the Chinese government announced that all married couples would be allowed to have two children in order to reverse the rapid aging of the labor force. In 2021, the Communist Party's top policy-making body, the Politburo, announced that all Chinese couples would be allowed to have three children, ending the two-child policy that failed to improve the declining birth rate. According to official figures from China, from 1980 to 2014, 675 million people were born in China, with an average male-to-female ratio of 114.7, meaning that there were 114.7 males for every 100 females. There were roughly 23 to 36 million more males born in China than females. I believe they call them herbivore men. These are men that are just in a permanent state of loneliness because there's quite literally no women left and what I from what I've been reading they're actually importing wives from neighboring nations to try to make up the shortage and again they're dealing with their own version of what they consider social rot where they've banned recently effeminate men womanist movements and anything that's not considered traditional gender norms. Because it doesn't matter if you even give people the three-child policy if they're not going to have sex or get married and court in the traditional sense. Again, women have become spoiled there as well and have high expectations of men, which is increasingly harder for men to live up to. Due to the serious imbalance between men and women, a large number of men are unable to find a wife, which has become a difficult social problem to solve. In the 2021 national census, the average male to female ratio is 105.7, but this figure has been questioned as being altered by Chinese officials. 
In of China, course. unmarried men over the age of of 30 are called leftover men, there referring to the remaining men who haven't yet found a wife. A book titled The Demographic Future by an American political economist predicts that by 2030, more than a quarter of Chinese men in their 30s will be unmarried. As in other parts of the world, the universal law of love still applies in China. But against the backdrop of a serious gender imbalance and amidst the overall Chinese culture of being pushed towards the pursuit of money and the culture of social comparison, the matchmaking method in the last two decades or so has taken on a prominent feature of the market economy. For example, it's common for a woman to expect a man to own a home before the possibility of a relationship. Hmm. In poor, rural areas, men are required to pay a high engagement fee to the woman. Consequently, a wedding can push the man's family into further poverty. It says 12-2-2022. Uh, this is so recent. A bridesmaid procession in Kaifeng, Henan. The groom has a house and a car. The engagement fee is 260,000 RMB. Getting on the flower car is 480,000 RMB. Getting off the car at the gate of the husband's house, 66,000 RMB. Direct money transfer on the spot. Not enough money to cancel the marriage immediately. What? Okay, so let's check how much that actually is. So the exchange rate on all that added up is $125,128.25. It cost 125 grand. Holy hell. Wow. China's central and provincial TV stations have launched numerous blind date programs. The following are some of the highlights of these programs. Hello, I'm a girl from Kunming. I haven't worked recently and I'm at home looking for employment. I want a stable job because my monthly expense is about... Honestly, with the rates so jacked up, if the ratio of men is so high, it's no surprise that women are charging a premium just to get married, that women get to basically choose from a pool of men that have to have a car, have to have a house, have to have a high income. You have to have everything as a man when the scales are tipped so intensely in a woman's favor. Imagine hundreds of millions of men in the future in China will not have a wife. They've already started going around this, like I said, by bringing women in from neighboring countries. I wonder what this is going to do to the stabilization of China in the future, because that's too many men with no wives, nothing to live for. And I don't think the CCP wants to deal with something like that. 20,000 to 30,000 yuan or 3,100 to 4,700 US dollars a month. Men who have a stable salary can come and see me. If I don't marry a wealthy man, my looks, my body and my social etiquette, and my good character, my good personality will be ruined. Wow. Unless you marry a rich man, won't these things be ruined? Yes. My father is an employee. Of when she says ruined, she's basically saying wasted. I can't waste my youth, my beauty, all of that on a poor man. As straight in your face as it can get. Of a state-owned enterprise. My mother is a dormitory maid at the university. I have inquired at Jia Yuan how rich a man I can marry. One oh of the staff God. told me I can marry a man with assets of 20 million yuan or 3 million US dollars. But I want to marry a man with assets of 50 million yuan or 7 million US dollars. She wants double. Oh my How God. How did he assess that you could marry a man with ah! 20 million in assets? It's based on my height, weight, and my mindset at the moment. I'm independent, and that's my biggest strength. My requirement is that my partner should have more than 50 million yuan or 7 million US dollars in Holy assets. Holy hell. Because I feel that having a certain amount of personal assets can first prove his personal... That is, this is crazy. Imagine, imagine a woman here in the US telling you you need to have 7 million dollars in assets just to prove your value. Because again, the market is tipped in their favor when there's millions of men. 
There's a shortage of women. That's crazy. It's so interesting to see what China is going through right now because we have our own issue here in the West where the birth rate is plummeting. We don't have an insane ratio men to women. There's no shortage. If anything, there's a little bit more women than men. We still have sky high delusional demands here too, but we haven't seen shit like seven mil minimum. Value and it proves his ability as well. Wow. How many assets do you expect to find in a man? More than 100 million yuan. I think I should look for a man with more than 100 million. Because if it's too little, I won't feel safe being together. Holy shit. What is 100 million? Hold on. Dude, 100 million yuan is 14 and a half million dollars. If you don't have 14 and a half million dollars, she won't feel safe being with you. Holy shit. Together. <laughs> I'm looking for a rich man. He can readily give me 200,000 yuan. He can readily give me 200,000. The family should be a millionaire, kind-hearted, and have filial piety and love. Miss See, this is what I'm talking about, where they're out of control with their demands over there. And I'm telling you, I think, I think men going their own way is going to explode in China soon, simply because there's no other choice, bro. There's not even a woman for you. Mr. Handsome, don't you think I'm pretty? Do you think I'm special? <laughs> Damn, that man's At the same time, marriage agencies and websites have sprung up in China. But these agencies and websites, like many products made in China, are plagued with problems. There's Chinese media grabs. reported that in 2015, a 40 year old Chinese businessman sued a Shanghai marriage agency for failing to help him find a wife. After paying the agency 7 million yuan, about 1.1 million US dollars, God, later the yeah. agency refunded more than 600,000 US dollars to the businessman after a court ruling. In December 2021, it was revealed that Jia Yuan, a dating site with over 2 million subscribers, had telemarketers invading users' privacy in its administrative backend, where salespeople were even able to view users' one-way chats and view their browsing content for the purpose of targeting ads. However, the news didn't outrage young Chinese who seemed to have lost interest in the site. It has been a norm for quite some time that the site's official NPC's Weibo account logo. receives no response from its users. During China's New Year, some men are wow. using mobile apps like RentMe to hire fake girlfriends to avoid being forced into marriage by their parents. The cost of renting a fake That's girlfriend nuts. for a day can be up to 10,000 yuan or about 1,450 US dollars. Are you kidding me, bro? You can rent yourself and you can rent others. There's always a need in life. Come and rent me. You can rent yourself to make money. Is this their version of the sugar daddy lifestyle? Basically, right? They're sugar babies. This is the Chinese version of seeking. Holy shit. One or about 1,450 US dollars. A day. Not only are leftover men a prominent problem in China, but there are also a large number of so-called wow. leftover women. The main reason is that men need to accumulate a certain amount of assets to be able to start a family because of the... If you're a young man, you have no shot whatsoever. But what are you accumulating at the age of 20, 25, 30? Maybe it starts at 30. A man doesn't really hit his prime until he hits around 30 and older. So you're basically sexless unless you have some insane... You're like a stud. You have insane physical prowess to bypass the needs to just be the fun guy for the night. Otherwise, you need to rack up a ton of millions of dollars worth of assets. Holy hell. The excessive financial burden, a large number of men choose to marry late. When it's time for these men to start a family, they tend to look for someone who is younger. Of In course. China, an age gap of 10 to 20 years or even more between couples has been increasingly common. For Chinese women, as they age, the odds of finding a suitable husband decreases wow. significantly as financially stable, eligible men. Side effect of having the insane standards of needing a man with millions of dollars is your pool of men shrinks dramatically as well. And you're on the clock. We've been saying the wall. Women hitting the wall. They're called leftover women in China. Because if you're going to be a man, and I've said this plenty of times, if you're going to be a man that waits until his 30s or older, Get your life together, work on your business, do all this hard shit to make it, to have the so-called 7, 14 million dollars in net worth. 
You're not settling for this so-called leftover older women. You're going to go for the young in their prime, absolute highest value, man. We're seeing it play out in China. It's not insane to say stuff like this. No matter how hard they try to cancel you. Men have an age preference. Women have an age preference as well. Older men that are more established. And often choose to marry younger women. The Chinese Ministry of Education announced 171 new Chinese words in August 2007, one of which is leftover woman, broadly defined as an unmarried, highly educated woman over the age of 27 living in a city or town. The wall in China is 27. It says leftover women is a new title given to those older women who are called bachelors. The Japanese call it a woman thrown away by a man, or 3S women. Single, 70s, mostly born in the 70s, and stuck, 3S women. Single, 70s, stuck. There was a popular saying on the internet that unmarried women aged 25 to 28 were called junior leftover women, or leftover fighters. Unmarried women aged 28 to 32 were called intermediate leftover women or must leftover customers oh baidu the chinese version of google describes the characteristics of leftover women as highly educated high income eccentric and even too high iq the increasing number of leftover wow. men and women has made the chinese government desperate as the demographic crisis is approaching at an alarming rate at the end of 2021 a small county introduced a new policy According to the new policy, the county with a population of 240,000 started to gather information on single women to create a database for matchmaking. The policy says that a so-called marriage service platform will be set up to survey and map all female cadres in the county wow. over the age of 26, register them, and establish an information database and then start activities like blind dates. What if there's no suitable match for these women? The county government has in mind the leftover men, men who are unemployed and jobless. The policy reads, if female cadres as leftover women find unemployed or jobless male spouses, the platform will help with skills training and priority placement Holy in jobs hell. in the country. It will also... So if they can't match a woman to a man with already some assets and skills, some sort of job, the next in line is the leftover men will now get these women, essentially the leftover women. The leftover women are going to go with the leftover men, but their incentive is going to be government-approved fast-tracking of jobs and skills. <sighs> Holy. To give guaranteed loans to individuals who are interested in starting a business. The wow. document has come under heavy fire online with netizens questioning why women can't choose to be single. In fact, a number of local governments in China are taking similar actions. In September 2021, a doc... You see that? They don't want unemployed men. This is what we're dealing with here in the West. A woman would rather be single and alone than deal with a man that's not making millions of dollars in China. Do you see that? Even when the government backs you with jobs, with training, with loans to start a business, you're still not good enough. The government is giving you handouts. And it's still not good enough. Women don't care about men on their way. They wait at the finish line for winners. That's story as old as time. document from another county shows that the county government has requested statistics on the number of young people in the county who aren't married so they can analyze the situation and propose solutions. Sheesh. On the Chinese internet, the leftover men and leftover women are classified into the following levels. 25 to 27 years old, elementary leftovers. These people still have the courage to continue the struggle to find a partner. 28 to 31 years old, intermediate leftovers wow. who have few opportunities and have no time to look for a partner because of their career. 32 to 36 years old, advanced leftovers who have survived the brutal workplace struggle and are still single. 36 years old and up, Special class leftovers. Special the Chinese class. word remaining has the same pronunciation as the word sage. Monkey King, the main character from the classical Chinese novel Journey to the West, called himself a heavenly sage. This group of leftover men and women are jokingly called heavenly remains. 
Perhaps for many young Chinese, they just wow. don't have the time or opportunity to really get to know each other. In 2021, an ancient city had a sudden resurgence of outbreak. The local government decided to shut down the city. A 28-year-old woman named Zhao happened to be visiting her blind date's home. She was caught off guard by the city's sudden order and forced to stay at the man's home. The two young people gradually evolved from the initial awkwardness to familiarity. The young man's thoughtfulness impressed the girl, and they eventually developed an amicable relationship, becoming engaged within two weeks and hoping to get married in the summer. However, the abrupt blockade adopted by the Chinese government in response to the outbreak has caused far more tragedy than this unexpectedly happy ending. More often than not, those caught up in the marriage dilemma have yet to find a way out. On October 29, 2021, the Ministry of Civil Affairs of China released social services statistics by province for the first three quarters of 2021, which showed that 5,886,000 couples were registered for marriage in the first three quarters of 2021. It was 8,000 fewer than the same period the previous year and was the lowest number in history. It can be inferred that young people don't have confidence in Chinese society, its education and pension system, and possibly have little faith in love as well. As a Chinese netizen wrote, seeking love through tight barriers. This kind of search has degenerated into a fork in the road that doesn't lead anywhere. When you have to incentivize the people to get married, with government shrinkings and handouts, um, you're not really dealing with the problem at the root. It's like another form of leading with your wallet. And we're just band-aiding. Well, I should say, and China's just band-aiding the problem. Again, this is a cultural rot down to its core. And traditions in China have been evaporating at a rapid pace. The youngest generation no longer follows said traditions or rites of passage or anything. This is why China has been, I guess, scared into action with things like banning effeminate men from media. Modernity doesn't bode well for child rearing. Life is too fast, too expensive, we're too disconnected. And no matter what government incentives you place in people's laps, it's not going to change the fact that they're getting more and more awkward, the demands are more and more lopsided, and people have less and less understanding of what truly matters in life like family, like tradition. Instead, they're enslaved by the same consumerism and materialism we are over here, where you have to have X amount of numbers in your bank account, you have to have a car, you have to have a house, you have to have so many things just to get your foot through the door, and you risk becoming this so-called leftover person. It's wild, man. And based on the trends, this is only going to keep accelerating. It's getting worse. Marriage rates are dropping here in the West. People are more disconnected than ever. People have more mental health issues than ever. Social media is indoctrinating people more than ever. We're headed towards an incredible decline where don't be surprised if more than half and soon after that, a majority of people will be single and marriage becomes a thing of the past, man. The pendulum isn't done swinging in this direction yet. Technology's effects on people is absolutely mind-blowing. It's evolving faster than we can evolve culturally. We can't keep up. And we're witnessing the damage of social media, the damage of dating apps. This one in particular for China, it's the damage and blowback from government legislation. But we have our own version of hell here in the West, where we've created mismatch simply based on demands, simply based on the fact that we have a quarter of people born in single parent households. Our nuclear families here are absolutely destroyed. So we have two things that we're seeing happen in the world. The West no longer has any semblance of a nuclear family and tradition. Meanwhile, in China, they're dealing with an extreme shortage of women, which is causing their own version of hell there as well. We're seeing two systems fail at once. Where this heads in the future remains to be seen, but all statistics point to it getting worse, much worse. I'm telling you, if you're a man here in the West, you absolutely need to plan a life where you can work remotely and you need to search. If you're looking for love, if you're looking for marriage, if you're looking to head a household, you need to search somewhere outside of the West. Work extremely hard to free yourself from the bondage of corporations and find happiness in another part of the world. We don't even have to get into the conversation of what masculinity is deemed as here in the West. We've already had that conversation, already seen people get wiped off the internet. That's just another thing to tack on that makes it more difficult for men here in the West to build and head households. Then you got the laws. Then you got child support. 
let's not go there because we can make a video that's like 10 hours long to talk about all the injustices that you may come across as a man in the West. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, we're on Rumble and Locals. Become a supporter. It would help tremendously. I'll be doing interviews with men one-on-one -on -one from around the world, seeing how they found happiness and success in the new era we're living in. We'll see you guys later.